Yes. That's Wait, right. now the guy lived to be 70 years old. He can't have always looked like a child. No, he lived to be 50 years old. Maybe, maybe it was like one of those one of those uh one of those brave new world deals where you have your your youth until age 60 and then you just, you know, sort of feel <laughs> you just go full, dead. Yeah. You just want to go full uh picture of Dorian Gray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, picture of Dorian Gray. Well, yeah, uh, he got uh, he got his picture of Dorian Gray painted too early. That oh, was the thing. <laughs> well, that's so he yeah. could trade slaves at like infancy. Hmm. Fun. So anyway, yeah, for those of you who just uh came into the discussion, we were talking about a guy named Malbone. Thomas and, no uh, Francis. Francis Malbone Jr. Uh, uh, Babyface slave trader extraordinaire. Yeah, United States Senator from Rhode Island. We will get Justin in post production to put his portrait up on the uh, the, the slide here. He, he, he looks like a child. He looks he like a really little child. Does. He looks like a little baby child, little baby boy. I'm the boy. I'm the birthday boy. <laughs> as you're just selling entire families into slavery. So, uh, welcome to. Well, there's your problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters with it's slides. Not about slavery. Um, no, not not usually about slavery. Although that was also a disaster. Yes. Yeah. Um, sort of incidental. Yes. Uh, I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. Hi, Justin. <laughs> I am Alice Caldwell Kelly. Uh, I served as United States Senator from Rhode Island from March 4th, 1809 to June 4th, 1809, and my pronouns are she and her. But notably, you did not sell slaves. No, that's right. Congratulations, Alice, Thank for you. being on the right side of history. Yes. Oh, I guess I'm going next. Hi, yes. I'm Liam Anderson. My pronouns are he and him. And to those beautiful people in the Discord who have created the Liam Zone, I see you. I love you, and I appreciate you. <laughs> I I do feel kind of like a almost like a zookeeper waving at the captive monkeys, like "Hi, boys, yeah. good morning." Because <laughs> the they'll hogs. all say like the yeah, beautiful that's hogs. How I, I, I know, I know, and I feel awful, but I'm just like, eh. oh, like a little bit. <laughs> and we have a guest. We do. We do. Yes. Oh, who guessed. are you, and how did you get in here? What are you, what are yeah. you doing in my podcasting room? <laughs> I just clicked a link, and it brought me here. Uh, no, I'm uh, I'm B. Schweichelhausen, or Jay, which if you know me in real life, you'll probably call me that. Uh, I'm the person who everybody thought was Alice in the Discord for a long time, until Alice actually really? showed up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every, there was just, the, there were three people modding. It was Justin, ah, Liam, and me. Yeah. And people all thought, I was you. Well, congratulations on having been me for a while. That's uh, it, was, it was theft. fun, but it was basically just like a lot of tags, and then immediately, like ten people go, "You know, that's not her." <laughs> <laughs> I I Duh. always love uh, when people in our Discord, uh, in case you're wondering how to get to this Discord, uh, subscribe to our Patreon and or look around hard enough for the link because I posted it publicly when I first made it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love when people are like, "Who's uh, Angry Panda?" and I'm like, "It's Liam." Watching from the shadows, baby, <laughs> waiting for you to fuck up and do something stupid. It is like a 2009 yeah. ass screen name you've got there, though. What, Angry Panda? Angry Panda, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. In courtesy of my ex girlfriend, and I just have elected to never change it because <laughs> I'm a dumb idiot. That works. Very Thanks, nice. Jay. That's how I got mine, though that was courtesy of me being like a stupid fifth grader. Oh, okay. Mine doesn't go that back that far yeah but i guess I've i feel better about myself 15 years of regret on this username <laughs> why why squicklehausen but squicklehausen show some respect alice it was please so <laughs> random and then it became my email address to play fantasy football the next year and then that was my email address and then it became my youtube channel then i started making youtube videos and now you're just now stuck with it Permanent stuck with hell. It. Yeah. Oh yeah. Jay, <laughs> tell us more about yourself. What do you what do you bring to the podcasting table, Jay? Um we're, we're gonna leave you as much dead air as we possibly <laughs> yeah, that can. Was a lot of dead air. Uh -oh. I think I was talking. My my internet has hiccups sometimes, so you might be able to backfill that with my source audio. 
good public speaking is when you fill all the dead air with uh <laughs> like scratching yourself <laughs> yeah i get a lot of like and i'm really up close to my mic so you'll be able to hear every like skin you flake gotta coming off like, can, can, can you gotta eat the mic wet mouth noises yeah <laughs> oh well i'm i'm hard as a rock honestly hello and welcome to the weather is your problem asmr experience oh my god i can Uh-oh. come just from that All not right. gonna because i'm a man of dignity in class that's but. right that was good well uh I was the guy who convinced Justin to get into this whole video making, podcast making stuff in the first place. This is true. Uh, I do the occasional City Skylines video, trying, been trying to make them regularly for like four years now, maybe more, and have never really succeeded. Presidio uh, Bay is coming, folks. Presidio Bay is coming. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's wild. We're, we're actually finally getting stuff finished up and made there was a long time of just like waiting on assets and waiting to make stuff and sure ugh, yeah it's a, it's, great, a it's a great video game but it's a lot of work i feel it is a lot of work yes. and it's even more work when you have the ability to make assets because then all of a sudden there's that bit in the back of your brain it's like you know you could do this perfect mm. uh see i have turned that section of my brain off and i replaced it with uh drinking <laughs> <laughs> so um uh Anyway, uh, what you see on the screen in front of you is an old wooden subway car, which uh, says right here, um, out of service. Which is helpful. (laughs) Yeah, I would have have wondered. It has has, uh, sustained, very subtle, it has sustained a little bit of damage, though. You might notice um, roughly one third of the car is missing and is a splintered ruin. That's to save weight, right? That's what I always heard. Yeah, um, that's a good lightweight car. These mm-hmm. look; these were open-aired cars. This was an experiment to see how quickly <laughs> they could convert it into a fully open-air car. Welcome to the New York City uh, uh, Super Legara. <laughs> Super Legara, excuse me. This is uh, yeah, simplify and add lightness. Um, <laughs> uh, today we're going to talk about the worst accident in the history of the New York City subway system, uh, the Malbone Street wreck, or possibly any subway system. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know it was a bigger wreck than this. Um, Definitely for New York City, though. At the time, you know, I, I feel like there's surely there has had to have been a far worse subway the, accident. The, the only ones that come to mind to me are like um, intentional, like bombings, right? Like, how many people did the King's Cross fire kill? It's got to have been like... I don't remember top of my head. I only killed 31 people, that's nothing. Th- 31 dead. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, uh, there's gonna be people in the comments who are mad at us because you're so casual about their deaths. They accidentally routed a full Moscow Metro train into Moscow Metro 2. Oh. And, you know, they had to, uh, they had to uh, disappear all the passengers. Oh, I heard that. Get out of here, stalker. It's like the, uh, it's like the Lost Cosmonaut, but with trains. No, Lost Cosmonauts, uh, you know, that, that, <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> We'll say that for a bonus episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's like 1995 Baku Metro fire killed 289 people. Well, Joe Kasabian will be pleased about that. That's pretty bad. Jesus Christ. 289. Anyway, that's was another that a, episode. Is that We're a here. station or? You know, it doesn't matter. Let's do this one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Welcome to Well, There's Your Problem, the podcast we, where we decide what the subject of the episode the next, is yes. uh, <laughs> 10 minutes into the episode. <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, before, before uh, we talk about the Malbone Street wreck, we have to do the goddamn news. Well, the news is in. The uh, the official report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. Uh, and if you actually read it, it, it it's sort of like n- there's nothing much there beyond we've refined our existing our existing studies and our existing models, which show that you're fucked. Um, and that's like that's good. We're gonna blast straight through the uh, the target of 1.5 degrees Celsius of global warming. Uh, probably, we were supposed to hit that in 2050, we're probably now expected to hit that at like 2035. Um, and 1.5 degrees is sort of our like um, threshold for 
it, lots of extremely bad the things bad happening. Stuff, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The opposite of whatever the, of the cool it's, zone, it, the very hot yeah. zone. It, it's like one one point five is like the bad zone. Two is the really bad zone, and above two is like the catastrophe zone. Uh, and, and so we're talking here about like extreme weather all the time. Uh, like uh, an ice Massive free, droughts, ice uh, free Arctic summer. Outs. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, and a bunch of other stuff. We might shut down the the Gulf Stream, which is fun. Um, and as ever, uh, fossil fuel companies knew about this from like the seventies at the latest, and just yeah. uh, you know, built Don't that care. into yeah. You ever feel like you're having the uh, the game clock run down on you? Yeah, I fucking do. You know, I, I kind of looked at this report, and it didn't look like it said anything really new. You know, maybe it's because because my brain crack pinged on this ages ago. You mm -hmm. know that we're 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 just fucked. We're not going to do anything about it. And, right, you know, right. But, uh, Doing something about it would be hard, and it might change our way of life a little bit. Yes. Yeah. So if we wait, <laughs> our way of life will still be changed, but then it won't be hard until later, and that's a problem we could figure out. Later. That's right. I, I I think there's two different kinds of being a doomer about this, right? Because like, I mean, it's, of, and, and I want to mm. say it's hard not to be a doomer about this. Yeah, but the the, like, the scientific certainly. advice is we we are not doomed, right? And that like it, you shouldn't be a defeatist about this because there is stuff we can and should be doing. However, I think yeah. there is a, a sort of a yeah, corollary to that, which is the kind of doomer that that we all are, which is we understand that there is a lot. That could that could be done very very urgently to mitigate and in some cases even like halt and reverse the effects of uh, anthropogenic climate change, uh, but we don't believe that, that anybody is going to do them. Right. Yes. I I you know like I don't want to get too far into it just because like I'm not going to say anything new or groundbreaking or whatever. You're not going to like, like advocate for acts of eco terrorism. I mean, you do what you want. Mm. Like, uh... I can't stop you. Yeah, I can, right, exactly. Well, if, I, if, I'm, just, if you I'm a sign, not a cop. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't have a legal responsibility to prevent you from, uh, right. from doing that. Well, like, it's, it's, you know, it's certainly very hard to, you know, say with a straight face, some variant of it's all gonna be okay. Yeah, because it's not. Because it's not, and it's like, already people, not okay, and the yeah. not okayness is yeah, just being unevenly right. distributed. Right, hundreds of millions of people are going to die, and we don't give a shit as a species. Or I shouldn't say that; that's not fair. As a collection of industrialized countries, we simply don't give enough of a shit to like get the let out, basically, and actually do something meaningful. And we all know that. I assume if you're listening to this podcast, you know that. I don't want to insult your intelligence. Um, it's kind of what I, the way I felt about COVID is that it's hard to exist when it feels like nobody gives a shit if you live or die. Yeah, because we don't have the, um, it, like, it's not even just that our, our leaders don't want to do it, although they don't. It's that I'm, I'm starting to believe that as with COVID, even if we did have sort of like broad, uh, like institutional support for, for addressing climate change. Uh, like we wouldn't have, the, we don't have the state capacity left to do that, uh, because it, it turns out that a lot of stuff for like, you know, even just basic public health interventions, we don't, we don't, the government can't make people do it. Right. Yes. <laughs> Which is good, I guess, if you're like a, an ANCAP or whatever. We you, are not. You are, you are free <laughs> to not take the vaccine everywhere in the world. You might lose your job, but like you don't. Nobody's actually going to like stick the needle in you. No, I mean one of the things that um, really pisses me off, and like the way I feel about it personally is kind of like, listen, you know, I did everything right. Like I masked up and I got the vaccine when I was eligible, and like I didn't do anything. Like I didn't go to like a plague orgy or whatever. <laughs> You didn't uh, go to Lake of the Ozarks. Right, I didn't go to Lake of the Ozarks, and now I'm essentially being punished for it. Yeah. Because I did everything right. Like, that's that's what pisses me so off. Pisses me so off. Pisses me off so much. Because it's like, I did everything right. Why am I fucking suffering for these people who, like, and I understand vaccine inequity. Like, I understand truly, especially, like, where we live in Philly, like, not everyone's able to get it for a variety of reasons. But, like, at this point, in fucking Montgomery County, uh, Pennsylvania, if you didn't get it, it's because you just didn't fucking feel like it. Yeah. 
if you're an adult. Obviously, like there are caveats. I'm aware of them. I don't need the comments to. We don't. You know. don't come to this podcast for nuance. <laughs> no. No, you don't. But there is good news. What's the good news, Roz? Oh, it's our next news item. We are going to start mining Bitcoin with atomic energy. <laughs> it's oh, eco-friendly. Oh. <laughs> yes. Problems solved. Yes. Um, Talon Energy plans to establish a nuclear-powered mining operation and data center that will have up to 300 megawatts of on-site power when it's finished sometime after second quarter 2022. The mining operation and data center will be built next to the company's Susquehanna Steam Electric Station in Pennsylvania, according to the report, and Talon Energy could eventually triple its capacity to one gigawatt of on-site power. The facility's power capacity would grow in stages, expected to have 164 megawatts of capacity, supported by the dual one gigawatt nuclear units and two independent substations when the first phase of development is complete. Oh, um, good. We live what in it, the dumbest timeline. And this is, this is going to be used to generate fake money uh, that you use to buy drugs. You buy yes. a lot of drugs with that fake money, though. I'm never yeah. going to be able to get a new graphics card. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Jay, buddy. <laughs> I got a 6700 XT. We should talk. We should talk. <laughs> no Just deals. I know what I have. <laughs> oh, I, I won't even scalp you. That bad. I, Jay, I am going to require your literal human scalp. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some spares. Does it have to be mine? No, just any scalpel there. <laughs> okay, I can find some. You could just start like a fake Bitcoin mining company and raise a bunch of uh, venture capital for it and then actually just use it to buy and resell GPUs to people. Say that just again? want GPUs. Yeah, you just inadvertently you remake NVIDIA or like AMD, but like as a Bitcoin mining rig. Oh, that's that's fucking funny. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it, it's, a, it's a proof of work, after all. Um, yeah, so this is like part of a broader thing with Bitcoin from like trying to shift from a proof of work to a proof of state because the proof of work system is killing everything. Uh, also, a bunch of extremely annoying people are doing it. Like, uh, you know how. Ecuador's finance minister is like a big crypto guy. Oh yes. no, is he? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of his things is he's uh, he wants to like build uh, mining rigs off of geothermal power, like just build one on top of a volcano, do do supervillain shit. Mm -hmm. um, the, mm -hmm. the thing is, though, if you're gonna build a volcano lair with a supercomputer in it, I feel like. Mining Bitcoin is the lamest supervillain yes. shit you could possibly do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bond. Welcome to my volcano lair. Um, we don't actually <laughs> do, do I use it? Yeah. yeah what are you going to do, do, with do all this? Dr. Nefarious? Uh, I use it to like pr uh, bro, print have you solved heard of crypto, Sudokus. Bro? <laughs> I, I use it. I use it to mine Bitcoin, which I use to buy mail order drugs because I'm too socially anxious to go to a drug dealer. <laughs> that's that's the problem with this like boring dystopia we have, right? Even the most supervillain shit is like actually sort of legal. It's just really yeah. lame. We get we gave the volcano basis to nerds. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Bond breaks in. He just gets a 45 minute tour about. <laughs> The GPUs he's using and the RGB the volcano, like that. RGB convicts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He like grabs the laser and slices himself up crotch first <laughs> faster than the timer would have done. So there's there's been occasional like uh, attempts to do renewably powered Bitcoin aside from geothermal. Like I know there's been like some attempts to do like wind powered Bitcoin. Uh, and also, previous to this, uh, before it came to the US, there was like an attempt in, in Ukraine, because like the one thing Ukraine has a lot of, I guess, is nuclear power plants. Uh, ah, wonder yeah. how they got wow. there. Yeah, it's to, hmm. it was to use them to, uh, to, to mine Bitcoin. It's great. We're gonna, we're gonna take Chernobyl Units 1 and 2 and build a <laughs> Bitcoin mining facility on site. <laughs> Stop laughing when that's their actual plan. It, <laughs> it's a shame that that electricity couldn't have been used for anything else. No. No. Yeah. It's an infinite resource, Jay. Duh. <laughs> or just sitting there. And this is, again, I, I should stress, this is an improvement. 
Yeah. <laughs> like part of the reason why this is happening is because China is cracking down on like uh like illegal or like dubiously legal uh, mining rigs which are just sucking up all of their nice new coal power generation. Uh and so the various nerds of the earth are looking elsewhere and they have alighted on nuclear power. I hate it here. Hmm. Terrible. Well the good news is you won't have to like live with it for long because it's gonna get too hot. Yes. Good. Exactly. At this point, good. Well I'm joking. The good, the good news alone. is that's the end of the news. Oh, we didn't put an Andrew Cuomo? No. We Andrew did not. Cuomo. Cuomo. No, we I like Ross now yeah. refusing. Of yeah. course, Ross now he refuses to do the impression. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we'll do a news item when he fucking resigns, which will be never, never, not never, exactly. So, okay, we have to start by asking a question: What is an L? It's a a, a thing that you you post you, online. You take, yeah, when, yeah. when you're a woman. letter of the alphabet. L, Mister Bob. What is an L? Tell us, Socrates. It is an elevated railroad. Wow, oh. thanks, Socrates. Why yes. wouldn't you just call it an elevated railroad? Because that's too many syllables. It's like five syllables. Well, L is only one. And what, are you so busy that you can't yeah. say an uh, extra hi. four? New York, the city that never sleeps? I was gonna say, if I'm busy enough to need an L, I'm busy <laughs> enough I can't say elevated railroad. <laughs> I do like this this uh, this streetscape here. I like this a lot. This is a, this know. is the Bowery, right? Yeah, this is the Bowery. I always like the single pillar thing. It looks like some Dr. Seuss shit. I know, right? And it, it 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 there's a lot more light on the street. Diamond watches, diamonds, oh, diamonds and, and watches. watches. Alice, yes. you're home. <laughs> I love when you could just put up a big, uh, a big like gaslight sign that says "Rob this premises specifically." <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Doctor Mordechai, dumbass, and <laughs> okay, so so we built elevated railroads starting a long time ago in 1836. The London and Greenwich Railway uh, was built between London Bridge Station and Greenwich Station, right? Mm -hmm. um, that was sort of like a, a commuter line to the leafy green suburb of Greenwich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Metroland. Yes. Um, and then the USA, we sort of started out in New York City with the West Side and Yonkers Patent Railway. Oh, um, why is it called a... Do they have patents for it? I know that sounds stupid, but... Or is yeah. it vegan, like patent leather? <laughs> it's a very shiny railway. <laughs> thank you. Well, I, thanks, it, Alice. I was actually pretty proud of that one. Well, well, well patent, rail, plat, patent leather is, you know, there's patent behind that. No one can copy it. Did you right? fucking because, DRM my shoes, dude? It, wow, that's not yeah. very punk rock of you, Raz. <laughs> 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 I hate what intellectual property law fucking <laughs> attaches to my wingtips. So the, the, the West Side and Yonkers Patton Railway built down 9th Avenue. They started running the trains initially with cable power, where they'd have like a, a stationary steam engine in the basement of just a random building. They'd have a one-mile cable along the elevated structure coming from that stationary steam engine. And then, um, uh, you know, the train would be pulled along by the cable. That didn't work very well. So eventually they gave up on that and bought these cute little uh, mm. uh, forny steam locomotives and used those, right? They are adorable. They, 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 they started doing that in 1871. And a whole bunch of private companies got franchises to build more L's. L, Mr. Bob. In, in, in Manhattan, right? So, you know, the 6th Avenue, 3rd Avenue, and 2nd Avenue L uh, all showed up in 1878, right? Wait, wait, wait. The, does that mean they're like running more or less like in parallel, or have I yes. misunderstood? Yeah, competition okay. breeds success. Oh, Alice. True. Okay, so if if you don't like your service on the the Third Avenue L, yeah, if you walk you, a block and take the Second Avenue L, which is Absolutely. honestly kind of kick ass. Yeah, like I know capitalism is bad for any number of reasons, but like I do like the idea of like no, no. Like I, I it's such I, a strange idea on that train. Yeah, it's such a strange mm -hmm. idea to have actual competition now that we live oh, in a form sure, of capitalism okay, that yeah. has none. You know, 
Uh, in fairness, those Manhattan blocks are pretty long. So yeah. are <laughs> but you'd be able to take trolleys and things the same routes on the, I mean, you can see it right here, right? You got, oh, yeah. what, three, four trolley tracks four and two elevated tracks. And Look at all L's. that public transport in one photo. Yes. Must have been nice. Must have been. Must have been no. nice. No, so you got all these competing steam <laughs> you, could, you could stop spread. off, rob that guy of his diamonds and watches, hop on a trolley. A competing trolley, even. <laughs> that's, that's some NIMBY bullshit, Allison, you know it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually opposing the L, because people are going to ride in and take all of my diamonds. Gadzooks, this uh, horse car line will bring in hoodlums and vagrants. <laughs> but that beautiful historic character of my neighborhood, it might be changed if Irish people could ride the elevated railway. <laughs> they're going to the spill their stouts on my diamond watches. <laughs> One of the problems with the steam elevated railroads is they ran very frequently with steam locomotives, right? Oh no, uh, what a shame. Yeah. Reliable transportation. Ah, uh, uh, well. Uh, uh, more reliable than horses, I guess. Maybe? Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. Depends how attached you are to the horse. Not very, given this podcast history of basically sacrificing horses <laughs> to the gods. And New York cities. They're not particularly fast. They don't accelerate great. They need to carry all this fuel. They need uh Can you please to not make fun of me on the podcast? <laughs> don't they also need like a, a, like more like water? So you need to have like big fucking water tanks along the thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I I don't know if you'd have to rewater the engine through that short of a run. Mm. But then again, I, I don't know. So you just like do it at night or it's still no, you'd have to do it at the ends of the line at oh, least. Okay. Or at okay. one end of the okay. line. But that still means, you know, a, a modern, I'm sure we'll get there, but a modern you, you system. You need yeah. your, your water, your coal. Uh, yeah. You, yeah. You know, it's not, you can't your just like, laborers. Yeah. park the train, go to the other cab and drive it out again. You actually have oh, to do sure. stuff. And that's a pain in the ass for transit operations. You gotta run the locomotive around at the end of the line, yeah. Uh, just, someone just throw the reverser, easy. <laughs> you don't need to see where you're going. So this is why it's you're an elevated train. railway. It, yeah. yeah, good point. If they're yeah. on the tracks. That's their problem. Well, mm -hmm. actually, that was another thing about the oh, early boy. L's. They didn't really have signaling. Yeah, because you're up in the sky, Roz. Duh. <laughs> they, they ran on line of sight uh, operations. I see just, no problem. Just here. sort of uh, looked at the guy ahead and tried to stay not too far. Behind back, him. Back when there was that much coal dust and shit in the air that, like, <laughs> the fog killed people. And when it came time to install signals, the companies running this were pissed because they were like, uh, excuse me, we oh, won't be it. able to run as fast or as many trains anymore. No, we don't want to do this. <laughs> we don't want to do this. Yeah. Once again, big government over regulating a successful private industry. I, I mean, that is a big theme of, like, the, the New York City subway system in the 1900s, honestly. Um, it's true. <laughs> but also, so, I mean, as you'll see, the other big theme is that without regulation, it was just complete chaos and anarchy. Yes. Well, good, the good news is when I'm on the subway today, it feels mm. orderly yeah. and well run and maintained exactly. and not like chaos and exactly anarchy. and and like uh, as 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 status justin and i have to uncritically support every state intervention into anything at any time <laughs> <True. Morons>. <laughs> <laughs> no because you have to you have to like critically oppose every single yes, government I am. yes i know <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse yeah. alice you have no idea <laughs> all right so one one solution to some of the problems posed by steam locomotives was what if we make the trains electric okay i like electric trains they're cool yes so, First fully electric elevated railroad was built in beautiful Sioux City, Iowa in 1892. Bus, for bustling it, metropolis. I was going to say a world city to this day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, they, they, uh, they, they, I think they kind of jumped the gun on how fast the city was going to grow. Maybe a little, but <laughs> they're enthusiastic. It's called so, civic pride. 
the 1890s were a big year for electric L's. Uh, following that was, of course, the Liverpool Overhead Railway in 1893, which claims to be the first electric L, but is not. Um, <laughs> uh louisville built one in 1893 louisville kentucky chicago got their electric l in 1895 uh new york city's l's remained mostly steam powered until the early 1900s though because the system was so big and you had so much sunk cost right sure that's a new york city transit sort of theme tradition here. yes yeah. <laughs> mm. just remaining older and more out of date because the system was so big sunk costs etc mm-hmm yeah. Um, but once you installed electricity with a third rail, you had faster trains, you had less complex equipment, you had fewer crews, we were easier to train. You still had other issues, though, with these L's. You know, the trains were still loud. The L structures weren't particularly pretty. They darkened the street below. Um, and you start as, feeling like Lovecraft in Brooklyn, waiting for a guy to jump out from under like a, the shadow of an elevated train and like uh, turn into a monster or whatever. Yes. That's yeah, a th long way. That's a that's very convoluted to just be racist, Alice. Well, that that's what that's what Lovecraft was all about. Yes, I also I wanted true. to say the sequence of words Lovecraft in Brooklyn as a reference to a Mountain Goats song. Ah, very good. Uh, I see. I'm not all that familiar with the Mountain Goats, but I do like uh, I like No Children, uh, <laughs> as we all do. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine being the poor guy living in that apartment above in the automatrix office, which looks like it's maybe right 10 here. feet yeah. wide and has you, you have trains a... on both sides? <laughs> He's constantly watching these trains go back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Roz would love it. Very this is, uh, my kitchen is my bathroom, but look at these trains! <laughs> spacious, centrally located, $3,000 per month. S steps from transit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my best friend just picked me up in a police car from prison yeah, I fucking and, uh, uh, I knew it was gonna be and I had to go good. to his apartment <laughs> how often does a train go by so often you won't even notice it I mean that's for a place like this that might genuinely be true because when they were line of sight you'd get a train every 90 seconds or less yeah, it just, always, you know, it's, it's always tiny train world yeah, well, I mean, you see, it's like three cars. Like, these were short little trains that they would just run, you know, absolutely nuts to butts. I thought it was less nuts than 90 butts. seconds. I thought it was like 45 seconds. It, probably. Honestly, it was genuinely like the, the, the governing rule for speed was make sure you could stop in time to not hit the guy in front of you. And that was it. <laughs> Which sounds crazy, but that's <laughs> how we do it on highways and driving. Yeah, that, that, that's the only cars rule is yeah. there are no rules. <laughs> Imagine you're the guy pulling the levers in the interlocking tower, though. You're, oh, you're, you're, yeah, you'd be you'd going nuts. <laughs> yeah, you'd be you'd walk out and you'd have you know you'd, you'd be like some guy, the cartoon guy who missed leg day, right? You have these <laughs> enormous jacked arms <laughs> from just standing there pulling this switch lever four hundred. I bet they had to have like F one pit crews to change switch components. <laughs> <laughs> you got forty five seconds to change this. There's an electrified third rail. Mm. If you fall off the structure, you're dead. Good luck. Ah, the good old days. <laughs> like when life was cheap. Yes. I mean, I would trade some human life for 45 second headways. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say how much. I didn't say how much. I said some. So the L's as they were originally built. Um, so this is Battery Place in Lower Manhattan, which is now the entrance to the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. Um, you know, these... these uh, so the structures are built very close to buildings. They cover most of the streets, especially where there's a lot of tracks, right? You wind up with all these complex structures here, like Chatham Square. That's up here. You can see this is a double-decker interchange station, right? Oh, yeah. Um, Just keep building like uh, lines on top of lines on top of lines. It's trains all the way down. Hell <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like this. I want to be a surface level Morlock, and above me and below me are <laughs> infinite Z levels of trains. <laughs> Would be a bad way to live. Uh, especially in the outer boroughs, uh, the L companies were kind of fast and loose about what equipment ran where, right? So you may have sections of L's that had trolleys on them, or you may have the L trains briefly operate on the street. Um... The Long Island Rail Railroad shared uh, tracks with uh, the Brooklyn Rapid Transit on the Brooklyn Bridge for a while. Um, 
believe book Brooklyn Rapid Transit even put freight trains on some of their tracks. Oh, that's hell tight. yeah. Yeah. Um, and you didn't have so much like fixed lines for these trains, right? Um, you'd have you'd have lots of different trains, they would take different routes, uh, requiring complex junctions everywhere. The whole thing is, you know, chaos and anarchy. Oh, so like a modern subway. Yes, but um, you know, less uh it, I'm I mean if you take the New York City subway today, your hmm. train will occasionally do some wacky fucked up shit. Oh, really? occasionally. <laughs> yes. Occasionally. <laughs> uh, but um but on the L, that was basically uh an expected part of daily life. Yeah, I mean, standard operating procedure was basically get as many trains from one place onto as many different lines and to as many places as possible. So you'd have like four or five different routes between, you know, one station in Manhattan and Coney Island or whatever, and they'd all be different and they'd all have different trains going different places and it'd be nuts. This but, is um, perhaps related to the fact that everybody was like doing a shitload of cocaine all the time. <laughs> well, the guy in the guy pulling the switches near yeah. walking tower sure was. <laughs> I was about to say. Hey, you're looking kind of uh, you're looking kind of tired. You should maybe take a twenty seventh cocaine eye drop. West Coast, turn around. West Coast, turn around. <laughs> Good news is you always have a one seat ride. The bad news is you don't know where that ride is going. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, look, when you have a train every forty five seconds, that's fine, not matter. right? It doesn't you can matter. Wait and watch yeah. ten trains go past you, and it's like eight minutes less. Eight minutes. Yeah, you're still doing better than the modern subway. Yeah. <laughs> these these L's were built by private companies, and they're originally a whole bunch of them, right? And and some of the companies were, which eventually became L lines, weren't originally L's. You know, especially the lines down to Coney Island, which were what were called excursion railways. Um, but by the time of our story, there are really just two which are the IRT, which is the Interborough Rapid Transit, who took over the 6th uh, and 3rd Avenue L's and also built the first subway lines, right? Um, IRTs, uh, they, they have the narrow uh, loading gauge, so the trains are smaller. They mostly operated in Manhattan and the Bronx, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, sur the surviving bits of IRT stuff are the numbered trains, so one through seven. Yes. On the other hand, we had Brooklyn Rapid Transit, which operated primarily in Brooklyn, um, including you on... You don't say. Yes. Funny how that works. <laughs> uh, so they, they ran over the Brooklyn Bridge to Manhattan and Williamsburg Bridge to Chambers Street. Um, you know, they, they had terminals in Manhattan. They didn't really run through Manhattan until later when they were reorganized, which we'll get to. And... Theoretically, these companies competed with each other, right? Hmm. Um, but sort of in practice, they colluded to prevent competition, right? Oh, so I, you know, I take back the thing about enjoying competition. Yeah, yeah. You know, if if the city, uh, you know, tendered another franchise to build an L or something down a uh, city street that might compete with an existing one, you know, one of these companies would just buy up that franchise and then not do anything with it but prevent anyone else from building there, right? I love how, like, love at, at this point, like, sort of contract law hadn't been discovered yet. <laughs> and so, yeah, the, there's no provision for, like, yeah, once you buy this franchise, you have to, like, use it. Uh, no. <laughs> you, just, you just offer it for sale, and they're like, yeah, okay, we're just not gonna do that. And you're just like, <laughs> un understandable, have a nice day. <laughs> I assume well, there's also like heavy bribes going on, to be fair, but still. Oh, oh yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. No, Tammany sure, Hall is still sure. a thing, right? Yeah. Mm. Tammany Hall is like at its most thing right, right. now. And we'll yes. get to Tammany Hall later. How they did nothing wrong? Okay. Book recommendation. It's called Machine Made Tammany Hall in the Making of America. Highly recommend it. Although there's, it is pretty I'm, much Tammany Hall did nothing wrong. <laughs> I, you know, I wouldn't say Tammany Hall did nothing wrong, but I will say um, the, the, uh, their virtues outweigh their vices. <laughs> <laughs> All I can recommend is the musical that Chris once threatened to write about Tammany Hall as a joke, because it was the worst thing he could think to write, and he was going to title it Sing For Me Boss Tweed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you can see here, this is a map of BMT, which is Brooklyn Manhattan Transit, 
what we need to do is cross out this M and put an R here. Right. Bert. And then there's some parts of this map you can ignore. I'm not going to specify which because it's not relevant. It's a beautiful map. Incomprehensible. Uh, well, the but... funny thing is it does not, it does not show the, there's an entire other system of L's and subways which are not shown on this map, which is the uh, IRT at this point. <laughs> yep. Of like directly competing ones and ones with, with transfers. I think even at this time, free transfers. Well, I think even, <laughs> even when this map was made, I think the Flushing line and the Astoria line were both jointly operated. Not yeah, that they so would that say that. Yeah, so that was a that. fun one. <laughs> that, that Queensborough Plaza station was an insane mess. I really, I really appreciate the idea of like secret hidden transfers. There's like deep railroad lore, you know? We're not, we're not going to show it to you. You have to One work thing that's really this interesting with, with this map is you can see a couple of spots where they hadn't quite finished updating the line to not serve the ferries after the bridges had been built. Yeah. So you can see there's still a couple little spurs that go to ferry slips. You might need oh, to yeah. circle them, but... Right here. By the right Williamsburg here. Bridge and by the Brooklyn Bridge, right? These hadn't been Oh, really yeah. built or so you used to have to take the you know to get to lowest manhattan you'd go and the take this <laughs> to Mon i mean the Brooklyn bridge connects pretty far yeah, up yeah, yeah. manhattan so if you're trying to go to you know this was all industrial docks and things at true. the time and wall street and whatever sure, true. it'd be a pain in the ass to go all the way up to city hall and come back down so you'd go and take the ferry and then of course they dug the tunnels and Fuck the fairies. So now they're all gone, except now they're back again, and they're more useless than ever. I like that they don't show the entire IRT, but they do show Hudson Terminal here with the uh, Hudson and Manhattan Railway. Now, of course, path. They show the H&M up 6th Avenue, too. Oh, sure enough, yeah. <laughs> Just pretending your competitor doesn't exist is I such a powerful like move. I wonder if they're like guys selling like bootleg maps of both systems. <laughs> <laughs> Can't remember. I, I used to be better with maps because I kept wanting to, for April Fool's Day, when I worked for the MTA, I kept wanting to put one of these maps up instead of all the digital ones. <laughs> That's fucking funny. You <laughs> and just up, put man. the old, old one up and just be like, you figure. And they, they kept telling me no, that people rely on the maps. They no, need it's, this. It, it, right? It's just, it's just one day. <laughs> exactly. You can figure it out. You, you, everybody just searches on your phone anyway. Why can't yeah, we just exactly. start calling ourselves the BMT for a day and see what happens? <laughs> just hide all yeah, the number like a trains. Throwback jersey. Check, check out what hiding the number trains does to ridership. It's an important experiment. That is an important <laughs> experiment, yeah. You might be able to abandon the entire A division. No one will notice. <laughs> yeah, think about how much money you could save. Just stop showing it mm -hmm. on the map. Yeah. <laughs> Go back to having a secret subway. It'll be like it. You know how, like at Disney World, they always um <laughs> they always make the uh the wait time uh estimated wait time larger than it actually is, so that people uh people are really happy when they get through the line quickly. This would mm. be the same thing, except there's a whole extra secret subway that you can take, right, to get to your destination. Think faster. of the like the the urban exploration possibilities for discovering a fully serviced but totally unmarked <laughs> subway system. <laughs> oh, God. You thought the Moscow two weirdos were bad. But a bunch of <laughs> bunch of like YouTube thumbnails of the guy like making that YouTube face. Uh, found yes. a secret subway? Three question marks. <laughs> you said there there are lots of fully finished but unused stations in the New York system. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. some fully finished but never used, which is hilarious and sad. So, uh, in 1918, uh, Brooklyn Rapid Transit was uh, clashing with the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers. Right, um, what they were doing was just straight up firing motormen who uh, joined the union. The motor Classic. man is the guy who drives the train, right? In this case. Um, and after this is like right, is this during or after World War One? I? I forget when World War One ended. Uh 18 after. I ended in November we, of we 18. Enter 19, yeah, we entered nineteen seventeen. Okay. The uh the the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers goes to the War Labor Board, right? And the War Labor Board eventually recommends that uh 
BRT rehire the fired workers with back pay. And BRT decides, no, we're not going to do that. Right? We love we love a toothless regulator. Yes. The War Labor Board couldn't do shit about that, right? But the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers could do shit about that. Uh, they called a strike beginning at 5 a.m. November 1st, 1918. So the war was still going on, but right at the like last last two weeks of the war. Yeah. <laughs> At last ten ten days, even yeah, yeah. and they, they knew the armistice was coming at this point, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, BRT had an ace up its sleeve to keep service running on November first, right? They were going to use scabs. Oh, Bill, uh, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? Well, oh, uh, that's nothing. Managers and administrative uh, personnel were pressed into service to keep trains running during the morning and evening rush hour, right? Some had experience running trains, but most of them did not. Now, funnily enough, this practice actually uh, continues on SEPTA, I believe. Yeah, as far as I know, yes. Yeah, when city transit goes on strike, they usually keep a minimum of trains running on the um, the L and the subway uh, using some qualified managers um, just to keep the tracks fresh. And I believe they run a secret train for city employees and cops. Secret cop subway? They, Three they question have a marks. secret cop subway when the city transit division goes on strike, yes. That's incredible. <laughs> Some real deep state shit there. I know, right? <laughs> on a BRT, one of these scabs was a man named Edward Luciano, right? Who, but he went by Billy Lewis uh, so as to avoid anti-Italian discrimination. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he was a shift manager, um, but he had received some instruction as a motorman, uh, a total of two hours of it, right? Nice. Um, oh, it's got it, it's like a kamikaze pilot. <laughs> this, this was before the invention of the meme that said you can always do an Italian accent and it's never racist. <laughs> back then, back then it could be. <laughs> I feel like two hours of motorman instruction just is like the classroom portion, maybe. Like, do you think he did it in like in one two hour block, or do you think he like had two one hour lessons? Eight or like, fifteen minute blocks. Ooh. I was gonna say sixty two minute. <laughs> yeah, like, they just took attendance, and that was the yeah. end of the class. Yeah, we did. We did sixty TikToks, which are gonna teach you how to fucking drive a train. He watched a YouTube by an Indian man. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, he also spent two days riding at the front of trains, you know, to get the lay of some of the land, right? But, uh, you know, he wound up as a shift manager. He didn't become a motorman. Um, and as such, uh, of course, he was available to scab that day. A man named Brian uh, Kudahi, uh whose book, The Malbone Street Wreck, I was not able to obtain, um, did say in the book uh, that the normal BRT um, education was 60 hours of training, a 90-question exam, and 60 hours of apprenticeship aboard uh, regular trains, right? So this guy has done a little bit less uh, training here. <laughs> he was close. Two hours, 60 hours. Needs to, hey, needs to do say. that that ninety question exam. I think you you pick up most of it right at the beginning anyway. Multiple choice. I answered all C all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good. <laughs> Get him on the train. <laughs> so Luciano's shift on November first began at five a.m. and ended at four thirty p.m. Right, that's doing his regular work as shift manager. Right. And at 4.30 p.m., he was offered a $20 bonus to take a rush hour train from King's Highway, which is down here. Which right? King's Highway? There's a lot of them. Oh, right. There are multiple King's Highways, aren't there? Dollar yeah. inflation calculator. <laughs> this is a mean um, trick that they play. Uh, there's three King's Highways there. You got one more on the Sea Beach line. Yeah. 1918. I... Bribed guy twenty dollars. Calculate three hundred and fifty nine dollars and eighty six cents. Damn, I take that. <laughs> yeah, deal. 
<laughs> Sold. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna hazard a guess that it's not the King's Highway on the Sea Beach line because I don't know if that was built yet. Um, so it might have been on the Culver line or the Brighton Beach line. Um, I would guess. I would guess Culver, knowing what we know now, but not one hundred percent sure. So either way, he's taken it up either the Culver line or the Brighton Beach line uh, over to Park Row Terminal here in Manhattan over the Brooklyn Bridge. And then he's going to come back, right? He's going to go up the Fulton Street L. Uh, he's going to go down a one of these fuck you routes. And then he's going to go over to, I believe, Coney Island Terminal. So Luciano's like, hell yeah, that's... Uh, Three hundred and fifty nine twenty twenty one dollars. Yeah, I can I'll, buy I'll an Xbox. That. A 1918 Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> a set of fancy playing cards. <laughs> Gather around, kids, for a multiplayer <laughs> ball and a cup. Ball and a cup. Ball, ball and a cup. cup. Hoop and stick. Yes. <laughs> it's a pack of all of those. <laughs> and a pack of smokes. Or just yeah. the stick in the Hoop is DLC. <laughs> I hate having to sign up for Hoop and Stick live. <laughs> hey kids, you want a Hoop and a Stick and a pack of cigs? <laughs> <laughs> wow, sure, Mr. Rosniak. <laughs> That'll be $359. <laughs> and 86 cents. <laughs> and two hard-boiled eggs. All right, let's let's look at the equipment he's using for this. Okay, so the only thing that rivaled the chaos and pandemonium of the operating scheme of the old New York City L's was the equipment. You had dozens of different types of cars by dozens of manufacturers. Some of them had open platforms, like this guy right here. I took this picture in 2019. Yep, uh, I was there. Yeah, yeah Jay was there. Uh, they still run these things on occasion. Um, his, his uh, on like historic runs, not regular service. I was about to ask, yeah, because they don't because they don't have they don't have enough balls to do that. Um, <laughs> Take riding outside though, uh, incredible. Oh, highly yeah. recommend it if you can do it's, it. It's it's great. You can just ride out on the open platforms. You know, the nice best way to ride the subway is with a lot of fresh air. Um, <laughs> some of them had open platforms like this. Some of them were enclosed with uh, automatic doors. Some of them rode especially close to the ground because passengers were afraid the trains might tip over on the earliest L's. Uh, some of them were powered cars. Some of them were unpowered trailers. Some of them were actually entirely open to the elements, like they didn't. They had they had like just slats instead of windows, right? Hell yeah! The main characteristic that united all these cars is they were made of wood. It's a it's a fine material. What, what's yes. what's wrong with craftsmanship? <laughs> So Luciano had almost no experience running trains, and um, eyewitness accounts said that it showed, right? Um, they reported lots of jerky starts and stops. Uh, you know, he, and, and again, I've ridden on these cars uh, that when operated well, they're pretty jerky. So I don't know what an especially jerky um, start and stop Get on these thrown is. thrown halfway out of the window. <laughs> um, he kept overshooting platforms. He missed a few station stops entirely. Just sort of uh, gave just up. Racking kept up those train sim penalties in the <laughs> Good, bottom right less, corner. Less dwell times. Less dwell yeah. times. Yes, <laughs> he's, he's that much closer to making his twenty bucks if he skips those couple stops. Oh, that's right. Got <laughs> to say, yeah. Um, this is this is the highest paid subway operator on the entire system. I mean, he yeah. was finishing up. He, He's coming off a 12 hour shift too. I wouldn't yes. you know, I'd be missing some stops. 12 <laughs> mm -hmm. hours of scabbing? Yeah. 12 hour, 12 hours of scabbing having well, to pretend that you don't have an Italian accent the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard work. 12 hours not just of like scabbing but scabbing in a sort of Don Draper way. He's uh he's, he's actually trying to do a Swedish accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm get Jorgen train to Tarnal. <laughs> I'm Swedish, don't um, get mad at me. One confirmed instance of speeding when he just came off the Brooklyn Bridge at Sand Street Station. Hold on, he made it to Park Row, the Park Row Terminal on the other side of the Brooklyn Bridge in Manhattan. 
he took on passengers there who were bound home because it's the evening rush hour, right? Sure. And proceeded down the Fulton Street L to the Franklin Avenue line. So that is, this is the Fulton Street L. This is the Franklin Avenue line here, right? When he got to the Franklin Avenue stop, um, he actually overshot the platform and then continued <laughs> down the Franklin Avenue L. As so the do. Fulton Avenue uh, L, Fulton Street, whatever it's called. New York's confusing. He had to back up and then um, go down the right line. <laughs> you know, he's got some mitigating circumstances here besides the fact he just came off an 11 and a half hour shift. Uh, he was also recovering from the Spanish flu. <laughs> Don't spit. Yes. Don't spit. Uh, he was spit. also grieving his daughter, who had just died of the Spanish flu. Oh, don't Ooh. spit. Yeah. This guy is, uh, this guy is a bit of a, a wreck um, at this particular point in time, right? Um, and his train was uh, composed improperly, right? So this, was, this train was five cars long. It was a motor car and then two trailer cars, and then two motor cars, right? Um, this meant it was heavy in the back. Ordinarily, when you were, because um, the motor cars weighed about twice as much as the trailer cars, right? Usually and, the, oh. I was going to say, importantly, the weight was lower because the wheels were the heavy part of a motor car. Yes. Yeah, and usually yeah. The, the practice was you would alternate motor and trailer cars. Um, this one... This one uh, was not put together right. Um, one, one source I looked at speculated it was put together wrong because of uh, some, some scab switchman in a yard. Mm. I'm not sure if that's accurate. I think this may have just been it was like someone also screwed recovering up. from the Spanish flu. <laughs> yeah. Yes. How many, how many of these fucking things are we going to have post-COVID, if there ever is a post-COVID? Where it's just like, oh yeah, this guy's like, crashed, you Brain know. Brain fogged to hell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we, we probably will have, uh, I mean, this was exacerbated by a strike, and we don't have unions anymore, so I guess it probably won't That's happen. Point. Uh, yeah. We've completely broken labor, thereby As increasing a safety. safety. Measure. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. So, now I have to talk about Prospect Park Station, right? Looks nice. Uh, yes, it is nice. It, it's it is okay. Nice. Oh, well, negative Nancy. All right, Liam, you can see you the screens I designed there on the left. Ooh. Hmm. Yes, Liam, Ross. You didn't, you didn't think it was nice when we were there. Was I tired? Was I being a little bitch baby? Uh, yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because well, we were... That's be because what, we Jay? were going to be... What, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. I didn't say anything. All right, so in 1918, Prospect Park was uh, sort of a newly finished station, right? Not, not entirely finished, but it had been reconfigured, right? Um, because uh, the dual contracts were underway, um, and they were building a new subway underneath uh, What's It Street, Flatbush Avenue. Flatbush. Flatbush. Yes. Bush. Previously, the Brighton Beach Line had continued sort of directly onto the Franklin Avenue L. Right. Um, it had been reconfigured so that the Brighton Beach line, which is now four tracks, the outer track would go onto the L and the inner track would go into the subway. Right. Um, now, in the future, only elevated trains would go on the Franklin Avenue L and the new subway trains would go into the subway. And that's why they, they didn't configure this line with particularly great curve geometry. You hmm. can see as yeah. you come in to Prospect Park, you take this reverse curve. Oh, right? it's a bit weird, yeah. Yeah, and a reverse curve is how you say S-curve would make it sound more technical. <laughs> yeah, you have, to, you have to navigate this track mm -hmm. in the shape of the cool S. Yes. <laughs> this uh, legend is, the, it's modern stuff. Every, every track you can see here was in service. Back in the day, when the when the Franklin Avenue L actually connected to something. Wait, so okay, so every every track. Wait, how, how does this? How does On this? The legend, oh, just like non-revenue oh, track, whatever. That's oh. modern. You'd use both sides. 
Ah, I see. On the original one. So you'd have trains oh, oh, coming oh, from... The, uh, I, I see this legend. All right. Yeah. yeah you thought, did he yeah. think he meant like a literal, like urban legend? I thought there was an urban legend that I wasn't aware of. <laughs> think about the yes. Will Smith movie, I Am Legend. Uh, yeah. So you, you'd have it. And it was, you know, this, this is now a permanent kind of fucked up part of the subway because you have four tracks of local and express service that have to squish down to two tracks because the local tracks turn off to become the Franklin uh, shuttle. Yes. So yeah, Liam, that was why you were mad because we had just come down here on a train. I didn't know it was diverted, oh, and then we had to take yeah, the Franklin right. Avenue shuttle back up. Hey, the shuttle rules. I thought it was going to be quicker, but it wasn't. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were there recently. I was getting our New York City trips confused. Yes. Now nah, the shuttle's great, but it's it it's. You end up a lot of the time, if you're coming from Coney Island and you, you get the express train, you wait for it, you transfer or whatever, and you go shooting up past the local train and then it passes you at Prospect Park, you know, before you go in. You feel like, like a real douche. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. Love this express train that gets held up behind the local. That's, that's it's dumb. a bizarre way to operate. It's dumb. Um, anyway. But, uh, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, anyway, back to you. Yes, okay. Well, trying to make this nice and smooth. Yes. Well, it, 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 has never, it has never been that. We will never it's edit what? anything out or in. Well, yes. you know what was not smooth was this curve. Uh -oh. It was there limited to six miles an hour. Oh, that's baby soft. Yes. So, Luciano had never driven this part of the line before, right? Mm. Leading into the six mile an hour curve, was a steep downward grade as the Franklin Street L descended into a tunnel, right? Um, now, Luciano approached the grade with his packed rush hour train with only the faintest knowledge of what lied ahead. Uh-oh. And this yeah. man is also a zombie at this yeah, point. Yeah, he's been up for at least 12 hours, probably longer than that. He doesn't even know what accent he's pretending to do <laughs> anymore. Yeah, he slipped into Irish. People have started yeah. discriminating <laughs> against him again. <laughs> now there's a, uh, you know, so Luciano uh, sees, you know, the curve, or maybe he doesn't. We don't know exactly what happened at this point. There's a difference of opinion here. Um, Luciano claimed at this point he lost control of the train, but forensic investigation determined the brakes were not applied at all. Oh. Um, at any rate, the train did not slow down for the six mile an hour curve. My sort of man was asleep at yeah. this point. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, but dude's asleep. Dude's out. He was just yeah. dreaming about the sweet hoop and stick he was gonna play later yeah. with his bonus. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you didn't have like a, a seat for these for most of them, right? No, like you a, stood you there. to stand. Yeah, yeah. stand in there. Yeah. You still mm -hmm. only get like a little half seat. Sucks. You, you can, you can mm -hmm. fall asleep standing up. Oh yes. yeah, that's People just what can I'm thinking. People can fall asleep like... standing up, can't they, Roz? It's true. Yes, I have done that. <laughs> I've watched you do it dozens of times <laughs> every night, like a horse. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually incredible. He just starts eating oats out of nowhere. <laughs> um, um, Sometimes Roz gets spooked, and that's why the podcast gets delayed. <laughs> He's just kicking his PC in the middle of the night. Nay, nay, I don't want to edit. Nay. <laughs> So he plunged in the tunnel at very high speed, uh, reported by some eyewitnesses as 70 miles per hour, but more Was likely actually? closer to 30. Oh, nobody nobody <laughs> knew how to estimate speed back then. Good point, yeah. Um, and this is not a good speed to enter a six mile an hour curve in. Hmm. Terrain. Terrain. T terrain. Pull, Pull up. up. <laughs> <laughs> So the first car, with Luciano in it, left the rails, but it remained mostly intact. It also severed the third rail, which cut off, um, uh, it cut off power to, you know, the system in the local area, right? Um, the fourth and fifth cars, uh, so here's the first car. The fourth and fifth cars are back here. They both also remained mostly intact. I believe the fifth car was totally undamaged. Um, Second and third cars, which were the trailer cars, uh, they didn't fare quite as well. I see that on the diagram mm -hmm. where yeah. they have been smushed. 
They've been smushed. Yeah. You generally they, don't want to see a diagram where you have to draw a train with a very squiggly line. <laughs> yes. They hit the wall up here where the uh, reverse curve transitions, right? Um, and uh, they just sort of scrape along the inner wall um, as they're being pulled forward by momentum, right? Um, now, the wall here was studded with steel beams, right? You can see oh. them poking out, right? So those are just shredding the wooden walls of the cars, right? Um, you know, and the wood just uh, starts splintering. There's shattered glass everywhere, right? And the splinters then, you know, impaled the passengers who were next to them, right? Mm. And this well before safety glass. So we're talking about danger glass. Danger right. glass, yes. Um, you know, so the whole side of the second and third cars was sheared off. And then there were passengers flung by centrifugal force directly into the mass of bodies and splinters. Right. Jesus. Oh, no, yes. Thank you. Um, now, since the third rail was shut off, there was no lights in any of the trains anymore. All the lights went out. Um, and the New York Tribune reported at this point that the train caught fire. But I lo looking from the photographs, it doesn't doesn't really look like it actually caught fire. Um, no, I don't want to say it looks fine, but it's not mm, like it, it, it probably compared looked, to the Catherine Tunnel fire. Could be, fire. Worse. Could yeah, be, yeah right. it could be a lot more. It's made of wood, burned. for fuck's sake, too. I, it's really surprising it didn't catch fire. Yeah, for real. Uh, they have like gas lighting on these by any chance? I think by that time, I think it was electric. Is it think okay. it was electric? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they even had like uh, you know uh, gas heaters on there. Mm. Um, yeah, no, it was not. They weren't meant for nice long trips. Yeah, exactly. So, um, first responders who uh, came to the scene reported, you know, they went down in the tunnel and found a solid mass of debris and splinters and impaled bodies. Jesus oh, wept. Just a yeah. just a mulch of it's subway a, car. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. There was. Um, there was no light whatsoever in the tunnel. So they actually went and commandeered some uh, private automobiles in the area and just drove them down there and turned the headlights on. Jesus um, fuck. Now, Luciano, our motorman, was completely unhurt and just sort of climbed <laughs> out of the cab of the I train. I should laugh, but like, of course he was. Yeah. It's a, a, a special providence that protects drunkards, idiots, children, and the United States of America, as also yes. von Bismarck once said. <laughs> um, one of the passengers in the first car was like, hey, what, what, what happened? And he responded, I don't know. I lost control of the damn thing. That's all. Then he then he walked to the prospect. But he fell back park. asleep. <laughs> no, he walked to the prospect park platform, walked up the stairs, and took the trolley home. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just left. Good. Hit to you, bricks. Hit to bricks. You can hit just leave. Bricks. Cause it causing a train accident. <laughs> you can leave. You, you can, can just leave. leave. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 powerful scab vibes. Yes. It's like, I, don't know. I wonder what that night was like for him. Well he was playing he was playing hoop and stick the whole time. The thing. I don't think he made I, it back to collect his money. So like considering uh, the past couple of days, he has lost his job, killed probably. a trainload of people, yeah. lost his daughter. Yes. And lost his nineteen eighteen Xbox. <laughs> they see the dream ball of, of, from him. <laughs> I, it's a pretty bad day to be this should, guy. Should, should, be, that's I, why you shouldn't cross a picket line. I bet it's, he, that's true. He, he fell asleep the moment he got home because he's just fucking exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, in the course of uh, your subway car being reduced to a bunch of pulp, uh, soup like yeah, homogenous, very yeah. sharp pulp. Um, Shaw, oh, spicy pulp. pulp. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say this is not a this is not some a pulp would be a lot less harmful than just getting a splintered two by four like just impaled through your stomach, right? Mm. Um, so ninety three passengers were killed and two hundred and fifty were injured, right? That's a it, lot. I mean, this this is a packed rush hour train. Yes, and there was right, another issue. Which was Spanish flu. 
don't spit. Which meant all of the hospitals were full. Do so, not spit. Don't. Yeah. Uh, well, so a lot of the a lot of I think they wound up having to open up Ebbets Field uh, as a makeshift hospital. They did. Yeah. yeah. Man, if there's was, one adjective you never want to hear applied to a hospital. Makeshift. Uh, makeshift, <laughs> yeah. Ebbets was where the Dodgers played, right? Ebbets was, and it was like a block away from this place, too. Ah, uh, well, that's convenient. Like, yeah, no, it was very close. I mean, if you're going to have to open up a sports stadium for a makeshift hospital, like Prospect Park kind of was the de facto station for Dodger fans. Sort of helps. Yeah, I picked a good spot for it. Yeah, right. If you're going to throw a train into that's, a tunnel wall like this, that's that's about as good as you can get. Because I, I think there was also a nearby hospital, but that one was very definitively full of uh, Spanish flu patients. Probably. Um, so, you know, this is a catastrophe, right? Um, and word got out that this accident had occurred to the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers, and uh, they called off the strike. So, mm. uh, I, I guess uh, in his position as strike breaker, uh, Luciano was very successful. More value for money than the Pinkertons, because you don't even have to pay him. Yeah, I was about to say. Maybe the Pinkertons are going to want their like hoop and stick that you promised them, but this guy you can just yes. fire. Him. You can just fire him. Yeah, the Pinkertons have a hoop and stick that also manages to shoot miners. Hmm. Capitalism oh, breeds innovation. Yes. <laughs> Uh, the hoop, uh, I mean, the stick is also a gun. It's a boomstick. Terrible. <laughs> All right. So, what what results from this? Uh, good, good, good news. Uh, Jay wrote this slide, so I don't have to do anything. Uh oh. All right. <laughs> so, we're gonna kind of rewind a little bit because. There's some fun backstory with this. As you can see, again, we've got our train helpfully marked out of service, just yes. in case. Blue flagged. Um, Do not move. But <laughs> This equipment, locked and tagged out. What if it just showed up at the platform like they expected to I bet to people would get on. Car? Probably, yeah. I probably would do it. <laughs> having having ridden, I mean, it's definitely not the exact same thing, but having ridden like work trains or museum trains and things out of service, the number of people who just are completely blinders on and will just, you know, the second that something that's not the platform, you know, not the tracks appears on the tracks, they'll just walk straight into it. They should but, just, uh, uh, they should just make a, the only thing that really repels people is a really smelly car. <laughs> yep. Uh, you can sit through anything for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> So, when we go back, um, the mayor of New York at the time was uh, was John Hyland, who now famous for Hyland Boulevard in Staten Island, which I know of because it's a lot of bus stuff there. So I had to make a lot of crap that said Hyland Boulevard was you know blocked or construction or something. Uh, but he was a big Tammany Hall guy uh, and you know a big anti big business guy. He was not a big fan of the Rockefellers or the Carnegies or. Uh, you know, these private, uh, private elevated and subway operators. Uh, hilariously, maybe not hilariously, I don't know. But um, he got his start working in New York City uh, for the BRT, coincidentally. Hmm. Uh, and he literally, so this, this will also show you kind of their track engineering. Um, he got his job at the BRT by showing up in Brooklyn one day climbing up the elevated structure and talking to somebody who was standing up there. He just climbed up the <laughs> pillar and said, hi, can I have a job? Uh, and they gave him a job. Nice. He started the next day laying track. Wow. Wow. That's, uh, and, that's, that's impressive. Right? It's sort of nuts. Um, but he genuinely Boomers kind still of, think you can do that. Yeah. Just climb the <laughs> elevator. That's actually how Jay got his job. That's yeah, that's he just, not super he, far off. He drew on a guy's face and said, Give me a job or it's not coming off. <laughs> <laughs> but um he he worked his way up to being, you know, a, a conductor, an engineer, uh, and well, conductor, something else, and then an engineer. Um, but that was sort of his kind of end goal almost of all of this. He's like, I'm gonna be an engineer, collect a hundred bucks a month paycheck or whatever. That's fine. I can, you know. 
Yeah, one buy month my I get house the hoop, in Brooklyn. Next for that. month I get the stick. Exactly. Can, you, can, you do have to get it in installments. You can't just get them all at once with a hundred a month. But anyway, well, I mean, uh, you got to think. Uh, you know, driving the L is um, you know basically like having a train simulator today. It's, he's just playing Densha de Go. Yes. <laughs> full time. <laughs> and it's all line of sight, which means it's basically how I play Train Simulator. Yeah. And Luciano oversped at a curve and flung the train off the tracks, which is actually exactly how I play Train Simulator. Hard save. <laughs> yeah. You got to turn derailments off. It helps a lot. Thanks, Ross. It does. <laughs> I miss you. Did you guys ever download that old roller coaster track for original train what? simulator oh my god yes yeah oh my yeah. god oh, i got no. that and like i managed to get the roller coaster track and like i was living outside of boston so i got like mbta trains and just took mbta trains on this insane looping roller coaster that's fucking awesome dude oh <laughs> uh, yeah it's that was a that was a good what, one what's hilarious is like 90 percent of the train people Capital train, capital people, by the way, mm. that I talk to now that are like around my age will remember that same roller coaster map. It was just like a, it's a cultural touchstone. I'm sure. Oh my God. Train all all of the, uh, deeply diseased group of people. All of the, um, all, all of the, uh, the tracks, they were so distorted that they just turned into two lines. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. It was just like two lines, red ties, you know, every 200 feet. Yeah. I was like the, uh, I was like the sea view map. That was fun. I liked, I downloaded, you know, all these like broken super acceleration things. And I found out on the vanilla Japan map, there was some starting location and terminal that if you just punched it, you'd go flying off a jump ramp at the end of the world. So I just did that a lot and just <laughs> sent dash nines full of intermodal trains, you know, just careening off this jump. This is the problem, the, the problem with the train simulator world. Um, well, the train simulator genre as a whole is they're just not as good at derailments as they should be. Damn, um, when are we going to get like BeamNG physics, but train simulator? <laughs> Imagine <laughs> being the train company or the train manufacturer that agrees to hand over that data. <laughs> you just have to make your own fake ones like they do mm -hmm. for BeamNG, right? Mm. Yeah, you just... Uh, this is just... not a ACS-64. This yeah, is a... It's a BCS-128. Yes. Perfect. Ship it. Any, any, any similarities are purely uh, coincidental. Mm -hmm. Stop no resemblance us. is intended to any living persons, alive or dead. Weird. The, the Onion Pacific. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so, John Island had basically kind of achieved his life goal of being an engineer with a steady income, uh, and his wife, who'd moved down, suggested he should maybe start trying out law school stuff. Uh, so he did, and Shortly before, Wait a minute, am I right? you, should, you should climb up City Hall and demand a job, and they made him the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> but he was so he was about to take the bar. He's like, God, he's like Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> this was the this was the only way you could get any job in 1918 was to climb you the climb structure to the top of the where job. it happened, literally, and you, you demanded a job. Climb the corporate ladder. That's yeah. All King Kong was trying to do was to get hired. <laughs> I, I said Godzilla. I meant King Kong. Do you okay. guys have an opening in the sanitation department? As you're just <laughs> flinging shit off roofs. <laughs> So, unfortunately for John Hyland, just before he was supposed to take the bar exam, uh, he got his ass fired by the BRT uh, because a supervisor almost caused an accident with his train. My man uh, did nothing wrong. Yeah, well, he, he made the, the critical mistake of not outranking the guy who, caused, who almost caused the accident. Ah. Wasn't Hyland um, also reading law books while driving the train, though? I don't. I didn't Hi, read about that's that. That's called multitasking, Ron. Uh, so many was... of my interests collide. <laughs> so he, you know, he, he claimed that it was not his supervisor's fault, uh, but that meant he was not a big fan of the BRT. Uh, and additionally, when he was an engineer, it meant that he was a member of the Brotherhood of Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers. So he is a union guy who does not like the company, and all of a sudden, scabs for his old union going on strike just destroyed a train belonging to this company he was not a huge fan of. So he threw the book at them. Hell yes. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So he, he went and he, he uh, took the BRT to court. Uh, he tried Luciano 
and the executives of the BRT for manslaughter. Uh, oh, that rules. The fun fact of this, uh, there, this was such a high profile case that John Hyland went and they had to figure out where can we go that like we can get a fair jury. So they took the court all the way to Mineola, Long Island, which is uh, less than 20 miles from the wreck. And that was as far as they could go. So but it was like you know. they, they couldn't get a fair trial in the city because everyone was calling for the executive's heads. Yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> uh, literally calling and saying that they should be brought out into the street and shot. Um, so they brought it 20 miles uh, away. It was where apparently, time in many ways. <laughs> apparently news hadn't spread 20 miles by the time they managed to get the uh, trial done. Uh, but anyway, uh, they're all acquitted. That's, cool. it's, it's like when yeah. you want to put cops on trial, or when you have to put cops on trial, so you go to like the cop suburb. Yeah. You just go yeah. to like the railroad suburb. Yeah, the system works. Uh, yeah. And Luciano and all the execs were acquitted. Right. I think Luciano went on to become a developer in Queens. He did. Um, oh yeah, my God. and he lived until like the eighties too, which is sort of crazy. He lived. Uh, he lived to the age of ninety-one. Jesus. Because a good day, yeah. Ogden Bastards live forever, yeah. I think he, I think, I think Luciano has the least amount of responsibility for this accident. Yeah, he though. does. <laughs> he does. No, I mean, the guy was clearly exhausted, even though he was a scab. Mm -hmm. You know, people do dumb shit sometimes. Yeah, he was, he, he was a scab, which is almost as bad as murder, but not a yes. murderer. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, yeah. he was a, he was a scab. And he never scabbed again. He merely became petty bourgeois. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he, he retired from scabbing. He quit the, quit the BRT and went and became a developer. Uh, I think he just went and developed houses in Queens or something for the rest of his life until 1985. Yeah. Again, insane. Nobody, so that means, statistically, given that we're talking about developers in Queens until the 80s, that Donald Trump growing up encountered this guy. He might have. I Probably, love New yeah. York. <laughs> Ridiculous. But it ended up um, still being pretty costly for the BRT. They settled for more than $75 million. Uh, which... Oh. $75 million, 1980. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of hoops and sticks. A lot of hoops and sticks. But that... Doomed the company. That sent them into receivership, uh, which fucked them over in a pretty major way. Uh, and, you know, as these things usually happen, they just reorganized their way out of it. They absorbed a handful of more railroads. I think they signed, had signed some big contracts with the city recently. Uh, and they became the BMT, which is why it said BMT on that map earlier. Uh, uh, the BMT survived until uh, the New York City Transit took them the, over. Uh, if the $75 million is pre-inflation, then they had a fine of about $2.05 billion. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Don't do it like that anymore. <laughs> no. So, uh, what you can see here is another uh, subway map for New York City that also doesn't show the, B the BMT or the IRT. Uh, because that's a third subway company that didn't quite exist at the time of this wreck. Um, but what's kind of interesting, so two years after this wreck, uh, John Hyland, the mayor, uh, pitches a third subway system and says, all right, it's time to quit fucking around. The city needs to build and own its own subway. Yes. Which, you know, turns out this... The, the 1921, it was finished sort of in the late 30s. It's got, you know, beautiful deco tiling and everything. And it was just, you know, absolutely pumped full of New Deal money. So all these stations are huge and enormous and overbuilt. And these, you know, junctions are these crazy high speed multi level things. And they had signaling in there from the start and, you know, all this stuff. But um, a lot of these lines, it, because this, this incident really kind of, sullied the the private subway system in the eyes of people and it wasn't particularly kind to ev how everybody thought of the l's as well so a big part of the uh of the independent subway here the city-owned subway was to replace elevated lines so sixth avenue had an elevated and it later got an independent subway line uh, a little later in this you can see this line through Manhattan here is 8th Avenue, which was uh, replaced the 9th Avenue L. 
Uh, they plan to replace the second and third avenue L's with the second avenue subway. Never built. Still ah. substantially never built. Uh, you can see down here, this bottom line here going out to Rockaway Avenue is the Fulton Street subway, which replaced the Fulton Street L uh, eventually. Uh, you know, so you ended up with a lot of these things replacing the L's because the L's became not very popular. Um, and a lot of this, you know, the, this system was never really finished. So they kept trying to build it out and World War II came along and they ran out of money. And then Robert Moses came along and nobody wanted to pay for transit. And then basically they were super hosed. So you ended up with them not being able to take down all the L's. So like this Grand Concourse line here in the Bronx runs like one block away from the, uh, the elevated line that the, that the IRT continues to run to this day. Uh, and you end up with a lot of stupid, stupid stuff that, that's still kind of screwing over New York because we have you know, two, two systems that were designed to work closely with elevated systems and one half-built sy subway system. And then the elevated, like a lot of the portions of the elevated systems were ripped down. And all these remaining parts were sort of stitched together into this weird ass kind of hybrid, non functional subway. Hmm. It's nuts. And it's, you know, one of these things continues to fuck over New York to this day because there's no funding nor like full blown competence to get huge mega projects like this done without Cuomo dipping his hands into it and making it stupid. <laughs> it's goddamn impossible to build any amount of subway anymore <laughs> it's true can't be done it's impossible we forgot how to dig holes but elon musk will fix it <laughs> <laughs> so uh the next next big consequence uh they renamed malbone street to empire boulevard uh except they forgot a little half block section so you could still get the little picture of the malbone mm -hmm. street sign Sort of weird. It's like it was like a parallel part that was still signed as the same road. And now that's all that's left of Malbone Street. Anyway, it's Empire Boulevard now, um, though part of it is Empire Boulevard Malbone Centennial Way because they went and made an honorary street thing huh. for it a couple of years ago uh, when this hit its hundredth birthday of this horrific disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they they also went and banned wooden cars in subway tunnels. Um, which that probably seems overdue, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was was pretty smart at this time. Uh, and, you know, this, this still actually means so when the Transit Museum runs the old wooden cars, uh, nobody's allowed in them when they're in the subway, and you can only go out. And So they'll, they'll hook them up, they'll get them ready, and they'll tow them to wherever they need to go, and then they'll unhook them and let them loose. Uh, which, you know, seems, seems smart. I, you know, especially when every other train in the system is this giant steel thing. Yeah, you one of those could probably hit this train of wooden cars and not notice. Yeah, matchsticks. So, yeah, fair match enough. Sticks, yeah, yeah, exactly. And especially now when they're 125 year old matchsticks. Let's go dry wood. Yeah. Well, the last thing, uh, the subway realized they needed to start, you know, considering loosely at least uh, some sort of speed control systems. So line of sight was oh. kind of. <laughs> on the out, yeah. they, you know, this kind of proved like, eh, you know what, maybe in tunnels and things you need signals. Um, so they started equipping some of the fleet with speedometers. Cowardice. Um, some of the fleet. Hey, th there were some trains operating until another couple of overspeed crashes in the 90s without speedometers. And it took until that oh, before they're like, York, man. <laughs> all right, it's finally time. What a city. Train drivers need to know how fast <laughs> their train is going. This is actually important, it turns out. Um, and then this was actually when, when signal timers started. So you didn't actually need speedometers because the track controlled your speed for you. So when you, you were going on the track, you know, it's like you would basically have to try to time a green wave. And if you overran it, you'd get the emergency brakes tripped, mm -hmm. uh, which is a pretty clever way to do it, right? You don't, the trains can be pretty dumb as long as there's something that prevents the, them from going too fast. So, you know, if you're supposed to go hundred feet in 10 seconds. When you enter that 100-foot segment, a timer starts, and after 10 seconds, then it won't stop you anymore. It'll turn green. Which is clever. You know, that's the sort of 1920s engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these are, you know, reasonably original still. But after, like, a couple more accidents occurred, these signal timers kept getting more and more conservative, right? Yeah, so they ended up putting them everywhere, and as these started to age, they also ch started cheaping out on them. So there's a two-shot kind that gives you two chances, and then there's a one-shot kind that if you screw it up, you're 
e-brake, you're done. And the one shots are the big problem lately. But these all started to like drift and slow down, which sucked. And, you know, you ended up with this huge problem where train operators now couldn't trust and still can't trust in some spots the speed limit sign. So they just go way slower anyway. Mm. And that screws over everybody. Back to line of sight. What could go wrong? That's one approach. Uh, we just saw what could go wrong. What could go wrong now? Yeah. We, yeah, we, we learn from that. our mistakes, Jay. The, the trains are more rigid now. That's right. Like, I'll just be like, yeah, you bet your ass are more rigid. <laughs> That's why uh, Governor Cuomo came in to fix the subway. <laughs> I think the subway is still technically in its Governor Cuomo authorized state of emergency. This oh, is like, true. Really? Yeah. Like three years of state of emergency, maybe more. He hired Andy Byford to come in and fix the subway and then fired him. Just wild. Just, just Andy, because qu- Andy Byford quit twice, which is oh, hilarious. That's true, yeah. <laughs> Andy Byford, come on, well, there's your problem. Please. That'd be fun. I think he's living his best life in London now. <laughs> Nobody's say, living yeah. the best life in London right now. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah well, okay. But that's it. That's what we learned. What we learned. 90, um, 100 people are so dead. 250 and, people and injured. The lesson, the lesson, of course, make sure the, make that, you always, that you always vet your employees to make sure that you're not hiring secret Italians. Yes. We thought he was Swedish. He was actually Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I see one meatball, you know? <laughs> he was so convincing, he hardly ever did the like hand thing. I knew those meatballs tasted off. <laughs> <laughs> this sauce is brown. <laughs> Excuse me, red. Brown sauce is on the Swedish meatballs. Yep. Mm. Um, well, I could go for this. Uh, yeah, I yeah. wouldn't mind. Sounds good. Um, well, we have a segment on this podcast called Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. Oh, a tank farm. I see yes. a tank farm. <laughs> Uh, yes, we have a, we have a, um, uh, we have an oil themed safety third today. Ooh, perfect. To close us out after our news item about how hydrocarbons are killing everything, we get to see about how they almost killed one writer. Hello. Well, there's your problem, comrades. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thanks for hours of warped entertainment. I must yeah, share your mental afflictions. <laughs> <laughs> Twisted. Many years ago, I worked for a large consulting and engineering firm you briefly mentioned in one of your episodes. I mainly worked on industrial uh, environmental remediation projects, right? This you worked story, for the Bin Laden group? <laughs> This, uh, this refinery appears to have too much greenery on it for uh, it to be a, a Bin Laden group uh, project. <laughs> I, I am going to probably spend like hours and hours now trying to figure yeah, out which are. refinery <laughs> this is. Um, anyway, this story occurred at a 70-year-old refinery, which had a large plume of various petroleum products floating in the water table beneath it. Cool. Yes. Our job involved pumping and bailing this plume of nastiness from numerous wells and French drains throughout the refinery and tank farms. What, wait, hold on. What's a French drain? French drain is a sort of um, it's a sort of linear drain. It has gravel underneath, like a metal grate. Oh, um, it okay. allows for infiltration. I don't know why they call it a. A French drain. It's the um, French door of drains. It mocks I, you as you pour shit into it. I assume after the comment says your food they is not very good. Renamed it to a freedom drain. Yeah, you don't want a French drain under a refinery because they're always smoking. <laughs> it, it's only a French drain if it comes from the right region of France. Otherwise, it's a sparkling gutter. <laughs> The goal was to shrink the plume or keep it stable so it wouldn't contaminate the adjacent river again. (laughs) (laughs) A few weeks before the incident, the refining company Safety Wonk 
told my manager that they wanted to receive near miss reports to show that us contractors were fully participating in their safety program. Mm -hmm. The manager said that because of the nature of our work, we should be able to come up with a near miss anytime we're working there. <laughs> All right. I, All right. I, I, I have one small detail to add, which is that uh, I, I learned that a French drain is also called a weeping tile, which is terrifying. No, I don't God. like that. That sounds like something out of Silent Hill. No. <laughs> he gave us an example near miss report from a person who had nearly cut their hand on a burr on a steel pipe. You know, rather than removing the burr with a file, or or a deburr, right? <laughs> get a deburr, get the little deburr, 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 deburr. Deburr. Uh, rather than moving the burr with a file and moving on with life, this person instead wrote a three-page report on the incident. <laughs> Heard. <laughs> <laughs> My coworker and I decided to just ignore this directive and get on with our jobs. After a long morning of getting dirty and stinky working in the refinery processing units, we were able to do some simple inspections in the banks of the river and short bluffs next to the river and wastewater treatment lagoons. Now, when groundwater levels were high, there would occasionally be seeps of the floating petroleum products that could get into the river and treatment lagoons. To get to the bluffs adjacent to the lagoons, you had to go onto a narrow spit of land between the lagoons. That would be the thing in the middle right. there, huh? Yes. Okay. The flare stack for the refinery was in the middle of the spit of land. Right here. On this day, there was a, a bunch of equipment and stacks of pipes stored between the lagoons, so we had to park our truck near the access road on the far side from the bluff. So over here. I'm enjoying this. It's clearly this this diagram was clearly made in AutoCAD, and uh, these leaders have very short horizontal segments. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know nice... how to use I don't know how to use leader scaling either. Just so you're aware, <laughs> <laughs> I cannot figure it out. <laughs> As we were scrambling along the bluffs to where the seeps generally were, an alarm siren for one of the process units went off. We couldn't remember which unit that alarm tone corresponded to, but well, guessed it... there's your three-page report right there. Yeah. But we guessed it was the catalytic cracking unit, or the cat cracker. That's what, uh, it splits one cat into multiple cats. <laughs> the cat cracker was usually where shit went awry. They must have immediately diverted the unit's flow to the flare stack, because there was suddenly a large fireball over our heads. Oh. <laughs> we looked at it and it got much brighter and hotter so uh -oh. we headed for the truck as we were making our way they diverted the flow from the two crude units that are upstream of the catalytic uh, cracker there was a loud roar of all that flow going through the pipes just north of us and we could tell the fireball got much bigger without looking we knew our worn out Nomex coveralls and plastic hard hats were no match for the hell above us so we kept our eyes down and concentrated on getting out of there. All the while, there were flaming blobs of heavy fuel oil being lobbed out of the flare and fa uh, falling around us. Most were falling in the lagoons, but some were hitting the ground near us. Jesus, you're doing fucking Omaha Beach shit with, uh, <laughs> with refinery byproducts. We finally got to the truck and sped off. We got away with some thermal burns, no worse than a mild sunburn, and some of the truck's paint and equipment in the bed of the truck was burned. Um, some people who were much further from the flare told us the fireball was hundreds of feet tall. We related the story to our manager and joked that we had a pretty good near-miss report for him. Uh, he said, Maybe we shouldn't submit that. They might reduce our scope of work if we do. <laughs> I'm telling you, just submit the bit about not remembering which unit's alarm it was. That'll do it, yeah. Ah, oil refinery work. Not mm. even once. 
Girl. <laughs> oh. Girl. Girl. Well, that was. We, we gotta we gotta make this shit obsolete. Yeah. <laughs> just just to save the, the guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was safety third. Shake hands with danger. Our, our next episode is on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. That is right. Yes. That's right. We yeah. have shirts with international shipping now. You can buy the shirts. They yes. will ship to you internationally. We have a live show. Tickets to that live show are sold out, but you can buy tickets to watch the live stream of that and, live and show. And if you're a patron, you do still get a discount on the live stream ticket. I believe yes, there do. are also tickets at the door available if you want to try your luck. Huh. Should, should nice. probably wait to confirm that before I put this up. I thought that was why they only sold 130 oh, tickets you may and not 150. Right. I think you're right, actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, my bad. Good. Yes. Jay, where can people find you? Yeah, what do people you do, can Jay? Fi- people can find me on YouTube and Twitter under the name Beesquikelhausen, which you should probably just look in the description for. <laughs> yes. This time we will try not to put a line break on the end of the link and break it. We'll, we'll, we'll try. Effort. No promises, we'll though. No, no okay. promises, yeah. Sounds good. Uh, I have a Patreon as well for my new City Skylines project, new being in terms of number of episodes, not in terms of time, because it's been a year or more. Procedo Bay <laughs> is coming. Yes. It is coming. There might be it's, something it's a- fun coming with it. Uh, you know, that I may make. We'll see. Really? Yes. The next episode. It could it what could is happen. This a crossover episode? I know. Maybe. Who knows? Genius know. at work, Alice. Yes. Do not disturb. <laughs> It'll be fun, whatever yes. it is. Yes. We have a Patreon. But- you can get money off of the live show live stream tickets, but you also get a bonus episode. The next bonus episode is going to be uh, going to be on the concept of the museum as soon as I finish the slides for it. Yes. Do you still need help with those? Yes. Okay. All right. I think those are all the commercials. All right. I think that's it. All right. Cool. That's a podcast. That was a podcast. It's Bye, podcast. everybody. Bye. Uh, I'll feed a zen. Bye. <laughs>